Hello everybody, my name is Shai and I am here with an awesome spread. <laughs> I can't even really believe, just to throw out there some of the cards we got here, we got the Lovers, Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, Ten of Pentacles, Divine Wisdom, Nine of Pentacles, and I mean, there is the Ten of Swords and the Tower, which can be two of the worst cards in the tarot, but I think in this situation they are actually amazing and will really, really, really serve us and are really ushering in, like, clearing out, really, really clearing out old energies. Um, actually, before I get <laughs> too much more into this, I feel like a shout out to all of the future people is required here. I don't know why, but I really feel like I can feel the people who are watching this down the road. I'm filming this on February 21st, 2021. It is Pisces season and a big part of the energy right now is this Pisces season energy because we're going to be having a Pisces stellium and it's just going to be really intense and I've been completely out of it for the last three days in kind of the most exciting and wonderful way. I'm just like floating up on a cloud, you know, I feeling like I'm in higher dimensions, <laughs> you know, completely uh not able to think with my mind and a little bit out of touch with my body and I'm just kind of rolling with it. I know that that we will eventually come back into our into our bodies and into ourselves and into our linear experience, but for now I think it is just entirely called to just let ourselves float free to fly three because there's something about like linearity is being dissolved right now by all this Pisces energy and the fact that that linearity is being dissolved is healing to our minds because we have recently been in so much mental energy with all that Aquarius season that now we're dropping out of our minds and giving our minds a break. Our minds are taking a nap and we are um, able to experience our consciousness without our mind being in like gripping us so fiercely. Um, but what was I saying? I was saying a shout out to all of the future people. I can feel you here. Um, so future people is going to include everybody who's not watching this in Pisces season of 2021. And I don't know why this feels particularly relevant for you guys. Sa Saturn is showing me actually when he moves into Pisces, which I think is going to be in like 2023. Not entirely sure. But when Saturn moves into Pisces, yeah, the image he's giving me is of like big gloved hands playing on a big church organ, or church organ and it's going dun dun dun. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I guess inevitably there are going to be a few people who are watching this when Saturn is in Pisces and You guys are, I mean, all of us, we're all going to be living through Saturn in Pisces. When we get to that point, it's going to be hearkening back to this moment of Pisces season 2021 because it's like there's a portal opening up and a few of us are moving through this portal now, kind of testing it out, testing it out. Um, and then when Saturn hits Pisces, it's going to be like mass, mass shifts. Um, Saturn is saying it's going to be irreparable, <laughs> irreparable uh, shifts to our our relationship to our spirituality. I think he's uh, <laughs> there's going to be mass awakenings on a scale we haven't seen yet. Like I'm actually thinking like dozens or even hundreds of people all in one place, like seeing light ships in the sky and having that completely shift everything for all of those people who were there together. It's going to be instead of people having awakening experiences in isolation, people are going to have awakening experiences in macrocosm. So I don't know, to people watching this in when Saturn is in Pisces, hi, <laughs> you, you are here with me creating this energy. Um, you know, you're part of this pocket of energy that I'm reading right now. So I just, I don't know, felt really inspired to say hello to you guys. And that's actually part of this whole dissolution of linearity. We are starting to operate, our consciousness is starting to operate on a multi-dimensional level. And that is why the first card here is Ten of Swords. <laughs> Ten of Swords. The final death, the final ending of something. This is 
yeah, I mean, you know, negative card, right? Someone's being stabbed in the back and they're like in despair and they're dying. It's a death. But what what is dying? It's li linearity is dying. The physical experience is dying. In fact, our center energy is this 10 of pentacles, which is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful because it is Stonehenge. Stonehenge obviously means a lot of things to a lot of people. Um, to me, this is like the crystallization of spirituality in the physical form. <laughs> um, Egypt. Egypt has a big theme for me lately. I know that doesn't have anything to do with Stonehenge. I know Stonehenge is Celtic, or it's actually pre-Celtic, I think, right? But I know Stonehenge is in England. And, um, Egypt is something else entirely. But I've been thinking about Egypt, um, remembering my lives from Egypt. And one thing that gets me about that whole Egyptian paradigm was how they so strongly felt that like their bodies had to be mummified and preserved properly so that they could take their physical their physicality into the next life right and something about that is relevant here i think we are disassociating from our bodies um which sounds unhealthy but i think right now since we are actually shifting to higher frequencies it is necessary on a certain level and if we do this um like very consciously if we can consciously allow ourselves to become non-attached that's the difference actually we don't want to be completely disassociated and rejecting the physical body, but being non-attached to our physical experience. It's just that whole thing of practicing non-attachment. That's why this tower card is sitting here next to this 10 of pentacles, which is this physical, physical experience. The tower is coming. The tower, <laughs> tower moment is coming, guys. Tower moment is coming in the kind of medium term future. Those of us watching this right now in Pisces season, this tower moment, like, for myself anyway, I pro I absolutely <laughs> project a tower moment for myself during the Pisces new moon. That is really, really intense energy for me. Like for me, that is the moment that Pisces new moon is the moment of the year that where the veil is the thinnest. I know a lot of people talk about Halloween um, being, you know, the moment when the veil is the thinnest. But for me, it's the Pisces new moon. So, you know, for some of you, this could be that something coming <laughs> um Saturn in Pisces for, for you guys for you future people uh the, I think the duration of Saturn in Pisces is going to be like a collective tower moment um so yeah something is coming and it's funny because I've been having that feeling build and build and build and then I finally did have something happen I had something really incredible and amazing and unbelievable like a mystical experience happen and but I right away I was like oh my god that was the most insane unbelievable amazing magical experience of my life and that was like the tip of the iceberg <laughs> so more more of a tower iceberg is coming our way but I am really really excited about it because it is oh well, what's it bringing in here it's uh, activating our third eye look at this page of swords this is a beautiful representation of the page of swords because She's pointing at her third eye, like literally pointing at it. And it's this sword channeling energy down. This is getting downloads directly into your third eye, upgrades directly into your third eye. And this is the kind of tower moment I'm talking about where it's not really a physical, you know, traumatic tower moment. This is like a spiritual tower moment <laughs> where something happens that is so intense that it might scare you so maybe that is why you know you're watching this message that if you start to have like you know spiritual spiritual or mystical experiences or experiences with aliens and you know ets and ships and all that those experiences that can really scare us this is your chance to um like prepare <laughs> prepare yourself prepare yourself for it and it's really um, your chance to use your divine wisdom. This tower moment is tu tuning you into your divine wisdom. It's like this like lightning bolt you're going to get to your third eye. And this third eye experience that you're going to be having 
is all about tuning you into your own inner navigation system. More and more lately, I've been just so, so, so much feeling that we all have been overlooking how our own inner guidance system works. I know I've talked about this in a, in a recent video, but it's just becoming like clearer and clearer to me how we need to pay attention to how our guidance system is working. And um, my dog actually gave me an example of this today. I took him outside and I live in a kind of big sprawling apartment complex. There's many different buildings and it's a total maze. So I was letting my dog just walk me around, you know, he was following his nose and I was following him and I was really watching him. You know, you've seen dogs walk and follow their nose, right? They go over here and then they go over here and then they just go backwards and they kind of just go all over the place, right? But to us, it looks like they're all over the map, but to them, they are following their nose. They know exactly where they're going. They're following that one scent. Eventually he took me down this hallway <laughs> and, and then I found out what he was searching for. He found someone's tacos that had been delivered and, you know, just left outside their apartment door. <laughs> And he was like, ha ha, I found the pot of gold, you know, the, the tacos. <laughs> um, and it, it just clicked for me. That is how following our intuition should feel. It should, we should be following our intuition the way a dog follows his nose. <laughs> um, you know, the dog is never doubting what he smells, right? He smells it. Therefore, he knows it is real. This is the dog's divine wisdom. And that's how we should feel. You feel an impression. You should know that that is real. <laughs> it is you're you're smelling it. It's like it's like something you can smell. But for some reason, we've just been detached from our intuition, right? So following the crazy breadcrumb trail, it takes you over here, it loops you around, it takes you back, it takes you forward, it takes you all around. Eventually, you're gonna get to the tacos. <laughs> um, of course, I didn't let my dog eat somebody else's tacos. So sometimes we follow our intuition and. It's not for us. The thing we find, the thing we were looking for, but it wasn't for us anyway. But the journey was still important for us to go on. So after this tower moment clears, big upgrade to your third eye, which isn't... When I say third eye upgrade, if you're thinking that suddenly you're going to be, you know, seeing like ghosts and angels and whatever, like with your eyeballs wide open. I mean, for some of you, definitely some of you could be getting visual upgrades. <laughs> um, but for most of us, it's an upgrade to our divine wisdom. That That's your third eye. It's your, your interface with your intuition. So really exploring how your own navigational system works. Okay, so I've been kind of jumping around all over the place and now I want to go back to Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and the Lovers. Isn't that interesting? Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and the Lovers. It's like Earth and Fire coming together in a partnership. And this this Ace of this Ace of Pentacles, sorry, has been meaning like new earth energy to me. Got this hand. Here we have a six-pointed star with like an eye in the middle. On this pentacle, there's some kind of design. It almost looks like the eye of Horus, actually. And there's rainbows. <laughs> At home, down here, we have a labyrinth. But we're being lifted up out of the labyrinth. That's that feeling of floating. I bet many of you are having right now, or maybe it's not floating, but it's that feeling of elevation of uh, disassociating up out of your body because this Ace of Pentacles is very interesting now that I really, really look at it. Something uh, like some golden light is pulling us up out of the labyrinth. And that is why we are disassociating or becoming non-attached to our physical experience because we are literally like getting higher up in the fourth dimension. We are closer to becoming fifth dimensional um, and in lots of our cases, we're closer to becoming multi-dimensional or omnidimensional. We're floating up, up, up out of the labyrinth. And this fire energy is like, it's like a hot air balloon. The spark that ignites the fire is what I just heard. <laughs> the fire, the lovers, <laughs> the lovers. I mean, for some of you, this will manifest, uh, you know, in some kind of partnership thing, but... 
this lover's card in particular for me lately has meant uh, it has been confirming my suspicions about my like higher parallel selves so if you have been asking <laughs> um am i connected to such and such a higher being you know if you're thinking about an archangel or some higher dimensional collective um, if you're asking you know am i arcturian or am i receiving guidance from this kind of being this is a this is a yes this is a yes for that um whatever you've been wondering because recently we've all been unlocking um like way more past life memories and we're not all realizing those memories for what they are this this card is like whatever you've been speculating about those things you've been wondering about yes all yes yes follow your divine wisdom because this lover's card is you know what when it's not an external like experience it's a relationship with our higher self and the emphasis is that your higher self you know the thing we call our higher selves it's not <laughs> not actually higher because it's all just self it is like you're here this is you this is your higher self and we tend to think it's like this but really it's like this and the fact that we think it's a, a, like this hierarchical vertical thing is just the symptom of our human perception so really it's just self and more self <laughs> um that that's what this this is about so yes to your questions about whatever it is you've been wondering about in terms of past lives parallel lives higher connections all of that yes And the final card down here, this is where we're going to be after this tower moment like fades away and is integrated. This nine of pentacles is this portal card, <laughs> kind of turning the tower moment into a portal moment. This is somebody who has recently walked through the portal out of this kind of um, more shadowy land. I mean, this, this thing past the portal does not look like a negative place but it does look like a kind of lower frequency kind of cooler shadowier you know kind of more of an earth place and then this person runs through the portal and here they are like in this golden field that is where we're entering into and for some of us this is about stargates I know um, a lot of you found my channel because uh, I made a few videos about Hadar and lately I have been getting this glimpse that in between like right in the middle of the three Hadarian stars so you know Hadar is the Beta Centauri system and there are three stars um, you know like A, A, B and B or something <laughs> like the three Beta Centauri stars or it's, it's a triple star system like a triune star system and uh, I don't know why this is just coming out of nowhere, but I'm going to just go for it following my own advice of following our own guidance system. I keep getting this glimpse that there is a portal. Um, I'm going to call it a portal and not a stargate because it feels very, very organic, like a natural um, like birthing point, I almost want to say. It's like a natural um, facet of the universe. It's not a constructed portal. It's not um, like, you know, made of metal or anything. It's It's like an organic portal. In the center of those stars and i feel like lately the hadarian energy it had this massive spike at the end of 2020 and now they're kind of um waiting for something my hadarian guides are like simmering down they're like okay just you know relax you know you, we got to integrate everything we've been doing um and they're waiting they're waiting for for maybe for this tower moment to clear out some stuff because eventually that like portal the other end of the portal you know like there's gonna have to be the portal opening up in our star system in our solar system so that there will be um a transference of energy from hadar to here but it's like not time yet because 
Um, obviously, we do not want to be opening up a portal to Hadar to be sending in our like shitty energy <laughs> back to Hadar, right? We don't we don't want that. We want to keep that place, um, you know, <laughs> beautiful and it's, it's healing. And oh, for those of you who don't know, um, yes, absolutely, Hadar has been or like currently is it's undergoing its healing process and it is um we're we're going to be able to go back one day we're going to be able to go back and it's going to be healed and it is going to be a important place of frequency holding <laughs> like that's a weird way to put it but, you know it's going to be holding those frequencies of ecstatic love for the entire galaxy and we will be able to bring that energy to our solar system when the moment is right to open the portal i don't know when that is going to be <laughs> but and i wasn't going to mention that actually but it that that's what this one of the things this portal is about, I feel like after we pass through this kind of tower moment, portals are going to be opening up, uh, like inside of ourselves. We're going to be traveling through portals when we meditate. And some of us are just, are going to be, for some of you, this is probably a message just for a few specific people. You're going to be like learning about stargates and portals and learning how to be a portal keeper learning how to be a portal keeper, how to make portals, how to be a portal, how to use portals. And that's going to be part of your whole thing. And for those of you who are the portal keepers, you're going to be opening them up and like calibrating them to make sure that they are operating at the optimal frequency so that only the right types of energy can pass through. Um, I think the way a portal is vibrating, it needs, to, that's what the portal keepers do. Uh, you, portal keepers vibrate at the frequency of the portal. So you open portals that vibrate within your range of frequencies and you need to maintain your frequency so that the portal can maintain its frequency. And that is how you calibrate the portal so that only matching frequencies can go through the portal. I actually don't know anything about being a portal keeper. That's just what uh, <laughs> what is coming through right now. Um, so let me pull one of these crystal oversoul cards to see what else is going on. Wait, before I do that, I want more details about this tower moment. I mean, it's a little tough to pull cards for a tower moment collectively because you know for everybody it's going to be a different thing right but i do feel that this tower moment is going to be like something we experience collectively so let's just do i'm going to do three different cards one is what is the nature of this tower moment ace of cups <laughs> uh, yeah so it this is a pisces tower moment a Piscean tower moment, letting the waters flow through. This is going to be like so emotional. It's a tower moment that could actually just like make people cry who haven't cried in a decade. It, it, it's all going to be about our emotions. And the point of it will be to, you know, if you're, if you're holding on to a lot of dark, dense energies, and I don't mean dark, you know, in a negative way, I just mean energies that you don't want to bring forward with you it's gonna you know purging those out and it's gonna be making you really like really fucking emotional <laughs> like for, for those of you watching this now there's gonna be that pisces stellium and it's just gonna be so emotional so emotional triggers explosions of emotionality people around you might be like having breakdowns like people who are not awake um you know they might have emotional experiences that actually awaken them so this is like amping up our emotional experience so that's actually pretty good in terms of tower moment because this isn't really like, you know, it, this isn't about horrible things going wrong in the physical. This is the nature of this tower moment is emotional, is emotional. So let's ask what, what are we being called to let go of from this tower moment? What is the tower moment clearing out? <laughs> Eight of crystals. <laughs> yeah. So this is earth energy. Um, and the Eight of Crystals is actually about physical attainment. So uh, some of us might have to 
like qu quit our jobs because it's killing us. Like you, you might get so emotional about your job, like finding yourself, um, like, man, when I had to, uh, like uh, when I had to go physically to jobs that I didn't like, cause I've worked at home for like a long time. Like I have a regular day job, um, but I do it from home. Um, and I've done that for since like 2008, but I, I do remember when I had to go to work physically and how horrible that was for me to be sitting in that stew of emotions. Cause you guys know what it's like to be an empath and then have to like go to a like horrible office job, right? It's like, so, uh, it's just the worst. So if your job is killing you <laughs> and making you like, you know, run to the bathroom on your coffee break so that you can cry in the, in the bathroom, <laughs> you know, been there, done that, you know, like I get it. This is like, yeah, you're, you're going to have to let, let that go. Um, and I feel that, you know, in keeping with this ace of cups, that it's not that you're going to be fired. This is actually a beautiful opportunity. Um, a lot of the time tower moments will force something to happen. Like if you're supposed to quit your job, you'll just get fired or, you know, or your job will get change management and it'll be so horrible. You'll have to quit. This is like your emotions will guide you to, to leave your job. Your emotions will be guiding you. Emotions will, your, your emotions will be guiding you to make the change. That's why people are going to be so emotional. They're going to get so emotional about something that they make the change. That's really interesting. That is so interesting. I don't think that energy has really come up very much for the past like several years. Um, the past few years, there's been so much Capricorn energy and before that was like Sagittarius energy. So things were kind of like, I don't know, not as emotional as they could be. We were like, even people like us weren't as tuned into our emotions as we could have been. Um, and it's going to be an increasing of emotions and so that we learn to follow our feelings. It's following that divine wisdom, going with the flow, tuning into Neptune, tuning into the higher octaves, our emotional body. This is like really learning to follow your feelings as if your feelings are like a dog's nose, you know, <laughs> to, to fall back to that example. So, so interesting. And I've been feeling lately around like the edges of my consciousness feeling emotions coming in from like my star family feeling them sending me feelings that are so intense that i actually am subconsciously turning them off because it's like wow i can't like i literally can't process that level of emotion so much emotion so much feeling that i can't handle it <laughs> so this this pisces energy you know whether you're watching this now or future people um it's like upgrading this tower moment is going to be upgrading our emotional capacity. So let's find out what energy we are leaning into or inviting in. What will be the paradigm after the tower moment? <laughs> 10 of swords uh, again. <laughs> yeah. So we got the 10 of swords twice in one reading, but again, I don't feel like negative about this card at all. This 10 of swords. Cause look at the, look at this beautiful 10 of swords. This one isn't about being stabbed in the back. This is sacred geometry. Look at all these circles, these circles and circles. I don't know if that pattern has a name, but it's basically like a six pointed star made of interlocking circles and it's all in a circle. This is, uh, to me, this also represents multidimensionality. Like this is leaving behind the physical, leaving behind this idea that an ending is a stab in the back. This is just like seeing your exit lights and taking the exit. <laughs> Nothing will ever be the same after that because there's going to be an, now an irreparable shift. Now that coming back to what Saturn said earlier, now I know why he used that word, an irreparable shift, but maybe what Saturn doesn't know is irreparable has kind of negative connotations to humans um, <laughs> in most contexts, like, right? Because we want to fix things. But in this case, we we don't actually have to fix anything. We just need to let it go. It's just it's done. It's, it's going away. So the main takeaway with this tower moment is whatever you're getting incredibly emotional about, like if it's a triggering thing for you, like, let that go. Don't even, don't agonize over it. Don't drag it out. If something is like ruining your life and making you really emotional, let that go. That can be, I mean, I was using the example of, you know, a job for somebody that's just the most physical, obvious example for a lot of us. This is going to be like, <laughs> um, it's like thought structures, thought structures, because thought structures, um, I never actually until this moment thought of them as physical things, but they kind of are because any kind of pattern or thought structure, belief system that we're running, those are energetic structures, you know, and 
physicality. Matter is just made up of energy. It's all just energy. So literally the structures in your minds are, you know, metaphorically physical, I will say. So we can let go of those structures, the structures that are in our minds, because we're going to be floating up into a much more unstructured reality because that is that's what we're doing, right? <laughs> that's what we're doing. So time to leave the structures and the things that are holding you back from love, the things that are not allowing you to be this ace of cups. And like self-love, <laughs> loving yourself is like my theme for, for Pisces season. It's just been coming up everywhere from all angles. I've been receiving this message about how if you want, like if I, like the message was for me personally, but I think it applies to you guys too. It's like, if we want to experience more abundance, if we want to call in more love from other people, um, if we want more money, if we want more joy, whatever it is we want right now, the main thing we're being called to focus on is inviting, like working on self love because that like softens us up and makes room inside of ourselves to receive all that we want. So whatever is stopping you from loving yourself and loving your life and whatever is stopping you from blissing out <laughs> needs to go. And this is, I think can actually be quite radical for some people really asking us to radically trust that everything is going to be okay. Even if your rational mind is saying that it's not because you're going to quit your job and you're going to be like, well, how am I going to pay the rent? That's insane. I can't just quit the job, quit my job on the 15th when I don't have rent money. <laughs> well, I think in every other maybe month before this month, before this time when you're watching this video, that might have been true, but that is why we are, that's why our mind is kind of getting taken offline right now and we're getting so centered down into our emotions because that's the only way we'll be able to trust that. So we're really, really, really like, I, I don't, I probably say this every video, right? Really, really being invited to drop out of our mental body and drop into our heart space. But this is like that to a whole new level, whole new level, like, like radical. This is, this is something like different. There's something different about this. That's why there's like two aces, you know, two ten of, ten of swords. It's so different. This is, this is a whole different things are going to be, nothing's going to be the same after, after this pocket of energy settles. Saturn is saying that when he's in Aquarius, it is, he is sorting us out in terms of the collective consciousness, like the collective conscious, con conscious. Yeah. And when Saturn moves into Pisces, he's going to be sorting us out in terms of our collective unconscious, the collective unconscious. Saturn in Pisces is the <laughs> It's his descent into the collective unconscious. Uh, he keeps talking about this. <laughs> I don't know. You you future people watching this when Saturn is in Pisces, this is maybe more more for you guys than it is for us right now. But that is it's just so cool, isn't it? Because we're all this all the time the time thing is in itself um like a fractal of this whole energy because linearity is dissolving. So we're starting to literally, you know what? Oh, let me dig out that card again. We're aligning with, communicating with, becoming lovers with uh, our future selves and our future like friends, you know, our own futures are right here with us, right here with us. Cause it's all, one thing where we're, we're really stepping out of this linear mind based structure where we're, we're dissolving time. <laughs> and of course that, that song time keeps on slipping into the future comes to mind. So, um, before I turn this card over one last thing for anybody who thinks they're losing their mind. Uh, I think maybe if you just recently woke up and this is all really new to you and you feel like you might be totally fucking crazy. You, you're not, <laughs> you're not, uh, you're just experiencing, you know, ascension. Basically, you're just experiencing the expansion of your consciousness and we're all feeling it. And this um, feeling of mindlessness, this feeling of timelessness, um, this feeling of losing our linearity entirely. I mean, 
at the time you're watching this, this isn't, like, this isn't the last time that we will experiencing this. We're, we're going to come back around and we're going to get back settled into our bodies. And, you know, we are going to have more linear experiences and things are going to go back to, you know, quote unquote normal for a while. But this is a major milestone in how far we've spiraled out and how far we've risen. So expect this to kind of ebb and flow and to spiral, like to keep, to keep going back. So, you know, this, this feeling that you're in right now doesn't last forever, but you will never entirely go back to the way you were before either. You know, it, it's like, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. You know, we, we keep just ebbing and flowing, ebbing and flowing and cycling and, you know, cycling back and so on and so forth. So know that this isn't the end and everything will continue to shift, I think. So yeah, just if anybody thinks they're losing their mind, they're not, <laughs> you're not, you, it, it's fine. This is just how it's going. So finally, what is this card? Pink tourmaline number two. Just giving you a chance to look at this card. I actually want to read the blurb from the book on this one because you'll see it is quite synchronous. <laughs> so let's see. So this is this stone is apparently associated with the new moon. <laughs> um, I was talking, I've been talking about the new moon in Pisces coming up. So that confirms that for some of us. And, um, I'll read some of the sentences here. Pink tourmaline encourages us to let go, to relax, to forgive when we can, and to make space for love. This crystal encourages openness and trust in life. It asks us to remain true to our inner guidance and to seek validation from our knowing rather than from another. Pink tourmaline indicates strength and communication with the heart. Letting go, grace, and respect. The pink tourmaline oversoul serves to attune and recalibrate our heart chakra. It has watched the human journey of incarnation and struggle to stay true to our light. It knows that we have accumulated experiences that have tested the wisest of beings. The oversoul of this temple serves to restore the hearts of all those that seek to continue the journey. Its deep, rich pink tones offer nurturing and restorative vibrations to the human heart. Ancient sorrows that we carry are drawn out and released. Through this healing, a new vitality enters and we can feel a profound sense of grace rising. We let go. So yeah, I would say the consciousness of this pink tourmaline here is really inviting us to, as it just said, <laughs> let go, to let go. We already knew that from the Ten of Swords twice, yo. So <laughs> whatever you need to let go of, let go of. I think if we can let go of it consciously, then this tower moment that is on the horizon for all of us will go much more smoothly and will be less you know, less traumatic, less towery. If we can deliberately let go of the things that are holding us back, then the tower moment will be more of a portal moment and we will just move right through it and into this golden field of the future instead of having to watch things crumble around us. So I think that's it for today. I love you guys. Sending you so much love and light. Goodbye.